Okay, hi there and welcome to another micro video. Uh, this time we will focus on the important concept of producer surplus and look at an example answer to this question. The question is evaluate the impact of changes in price on producer surplus. Evaluate the impact of changes in price on producer surplus. Let's look at uh, three aspects of this question. So make a definition at the start. Producer surplus is the measure of the profit, uh, the return, if you like, that a supplier, a business can earn from supplying goods and services. And we normally show producer surplus by the difference between the market price the firm gets and the minimum price that a business such as perhaps a farmer or a manufacturer requires to enter the market. You show the level of producer surplus by the area underneath the price and above the supply curve. And we'll come back to this diagram on the right hand side in a second. So we're looking for the question talks about changes in price. So we're looking to an, analyze and evaluate the impacts of changes in price on surplus. And one cause of an increase in surplus is an outward shift of supply. So, for example, the cost of your inputs might have gone down. If you're a farmer, the cost of your fertilizer, your feed might have fallen. And uh, this is shown in the diagram on the right hand side here by an outward shift of supply from S1 to S2. Well, what's the consequence? Well, initially, the equilibrium price in the market was at price P1 and an output Q1. That's an equilibrium point B. And at that point, the, the minimum supply price the farmer needed was price A. So the producer surplus initially was area P1 B A or P1 A B. Now, because of the fall in input prices, there's an outward shift to supply. The price falls from P1 to P2, and the quantity supplied, the quantity bought and sold, expands from Q1 to Q2. Well, what's the effect on producer surplus? Well, it depends obviously on, on the extent to which the price falls, but P2 C B is a bigger area of producer surplus than was P1. BA. There has been a net increase in producer surplus. Although the market price has fallen, supply is getting less per unit, and intuitively that would be bad for producer surplus. In fact, there's also been a, don't forget, a reduction in costs, and there's extra profit to be made from selling a greater quantity. Evaluation, I suppose, will be to think about the importance of elasticity of demand in determining the extent to which quantity goes up. Lots of people think that the only way for firms to uh, get more producer surplus is to increase price. However, in evaluation, higher prices do not always mean that producer surplus will rise. And one of the ways of showing this is to think about the impact of a tax on a producer. Let's do this on this second slide. So in the diagram, we see the effect of a tax, a specific tax on the production side of the market on the supply side when the demand is price sensitive in other words demand is relatively price elastic the coefficient of elasticity demand is greater than one now when the tax is imposed this means that the producer only has a fairly modest ability to pass on the tax to the consumer via a higher price now let's think about the diagram here originally the equilibrium was at price p1 output Q1. After the tax, the price rises from P1 to P2, but that's only a small proportion of the total tax. The tax actually is the vertical distance DF. So the producer has been able to pass on some of the tax, but not the majority of it. So the market price is risen by only a fraction, if you like, of the tax per unit. The consumer will pay price P2 after the tax. But of course, the government will get the tax, which is P2, D, F, P3. Let's go through that again. P2, D, F, P3. So therefore, the producer will only keep the price P3. Uh, and that, of course, is a lower price than it had before, and they're selling less. The quantity has fallen. So we can see in this diagram that although the retail price has gone up, the amount the producer gets, and hence the amount of producer surplus, has fallen because of the contraction in demand and the weaker price. The new level of producer surplus is P3FA, which is much less than P1EA. 
So evaluate the impact of a change in price. Well, in this case, a higher price caused by a tax actually reduces producer surplus. However, here's a third scenario where the producer does benefit. And this time, let's consider what happens when there's an increase in market demand. It could be the case, for example, you might be an avocado farmer and the, there's a global increase in demand for avocados, demand for avocados for healthy eating, and that means the market price goes up. So farmers may be able to increase their prices when consumer demand rises. That's shown in the diagram as a shift from D1 to D2. Now the farmer, the grower, is not only getting a better price, but is also selling a higher quantity. And producer surplus originally was P1EA. Now it rises to P2FA. An increase there of P2FE P1. In other words, the farmer is expected here to make a higher profit. Good news? Well, in theory, yes, but this depends on the ability, the extent to which supply can actually expand to meet the higher demand. Hopefully, farmers have maybe some stocks of products they can bring to market and sell some of those stocks. Manufacturers, if this is a business in the manufacturing sector, might have some spare capacity. But it could well be the case, for example, that they face limited they have limited spare capacity and their costs may start to rise substantially if they have to increase production, in which case producer surplus would be would be constrained. Quite important to use supply and demand analysis at a level. Uh, there are occasions when that's required and therefore it's important to understand the concept of producer surplus and the circumstances in which it might rise and fall. So thanks for joining in on this video.